If the angels need our permission to help us, then how do they help people who never ask? I'm Ann Tucker. I'm a trance channel. I channel from the angelic realm. I receive those messages. I transcribe them and I share them here with you on YouTube. And today's message from the angels is, is about that question, is about how is it that they're working with us even when we're unaware, when we haven't asked, since they have to always respect our free will. What are the situations in which they can help us and how is it that they're actually working with us? And the answer is that they're a key part of how we actually manifest our reality. They have a part in that dance that we play. We, we play an important part, but they're right there as sort of a supporting arm to our creation. So they explain all of that in this message. If you want to hear more messages like this, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe. You can do it using that button right there in right below the description box, and I would appreciate it a lot. And I'd love to be able to share more of messages like this with, with you. So please enjoy the message. They say, uh, we, you, we say you are wondering about our ability to see beyond that which holds your awareness. How do we perform our intrusion into the great unknown? And we say we are not limited in space temporal as you are, for we are pervasive in our countenance. We have capacity to understand all things regardless of dimension. We can see beyond that where you are to perchance observe that where you will be in time. We see how all things unfold and where you may delve into greater opportunity to have access to more of what you wish. So here they're talking about how they, how the idea of time and how we are locked into kind of seeing our life within this linear timeline. And they're saying how they, they're not limited into this idea of time, how they can see everything and that they can look ahead and see what's coming. Um, and that they, they're able to kind of rise above and look at all things, regardless of dimension. And they've told us before that they are everywhere, right? That they are consciousness that sort of is pervasive. It's everywhere all at once. So of course they can see the future, right? They can see everything that's coming. Um, so they can see where we may be in time. So they always leave room for that idea that we can always change our mind, right? That we can always do things differently. They leave space for that always. They say where you, you know, where you might be in time. Um, and, and they look at where we can potentially have, like, what are the pathways that are better for us? So then they go into more of that here. They say, uh, but we know you are not capable of seeing this now as you are. You cannot comprehend that which we wish to share. You have not the ability to forecast accurately as we have done. Therefore, we offer our service as one who can stand above and watch what develops, how you may be resolved in this undertaking you employ how you may find things to adjust or take care of, things you might wish to be different. So this is, they're really talking about how they work with us and why their role is so important to us because of the fact, I mean, yes, they can come in and they're powerful beings, right? They can do so much, but one of the ways they help us all the time is with this, is that, is that, I think of it a little bit is like if you've ever seen curling, <laughs> it's like that sport that they do in the mid, like in really cold places like Minnesota, the, the Midwest, they, they curling is where they push this. I think it's, it's a, it's a shuttle. Maybe I don't know the name of it. It's a thing. They slide it down what looks like a bowling alley and it's ice. And then they have sweepers that run in front of this, this thing. They're, they're pushing it to see how far they can get it to go down. And I think they're trying to hit like maybe a target or something at the end. And they have these sweepers that run in front of the sh this little shuttle thing as it's sliding across the ice. And they're sweeping like mad, like trying to get away any debris to clear the path so that this little shuttle thing will slide like longer and longer and longer. And I think the sweeper things are like the angels. <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's what they're doing for us is they're stand, like they're literally right in front of us as we're like, I'm going that way. And they stand in front of us and they sweep, sweep, sweep like mad trying to clear the path so that we can get there more easily. And they do that. They're going to talk more about how they do it. Um, and uh, and then uh, so, OK, so they go on to say. Um, uh, here we can intercede your awareness with our own provocation to adjust that which happens for yourself. Yes, we intervene where appropriate. We are a two dance step, yours in action and ours in retrieval. For we bring forth that which you contact and cement into being as reality. So, and this is really saying, okay, as that sweeper motion, they're not, the, the way that they clear the path is partly by determining what we're drawing in. So what is it through our vibration? What is it that we are calling into ourself? And remember there's there's like the world is like limitless possibility as we are choosing our trajectory saying we wanna go this way. They're above watching and seeing all these potential outcomes and they can see all dimensions. So they can see a million outcomes 
at once. Like they have the capacity to be able to perceive in a million different different outcomes. Like like this could go any which way, and they can see them all. Like looking in a you know a, like when you look in a three way mirror, one of those mirrors, and you see yourself in the back and the front, and you just seem to go on for infinity. It's like that they can see that in terms of how our action is at all times. They can see that we're going to be all these different possibilities, all these possible outcomes, and they can look to see as we are. Um, choosing and making choices. And as we're putting our vibration out into the world, what are we attracting to, to ourselves? And they're saying that is where they play. I love how they describe it, a two dance step, yours and action. So we take act, that action as the decision and then we start moving forward and we, we take action. Theirs is in retrieval. So think of it as always, we think of ourselves as being in motion, but in truth, we're bringing towards ourselves all the time, the things that, that are in resonance with ourselves. And they're going to determine their role as that sweeper in front of you. You're saying, I love this curling analogy. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I think it seems to work, right? It's a helpful way to think about it. But their way of sort of sweeping and clearing the path is by determining what is it that we're going to call in? If our vibration is forecasting out there, what is it that we, then they, they say, what is it that we actually come into contact with? And when we come into contact with it, we cement it into being as reality, as a reality we experience. So that is the place where they come into play. And they say it's a two dance step. So we are creating our experience with them. This is a, a, a co-creating experience. They go on to say, we perform the function of acting as your magnetic barrier. Indeed, we prevent some action from happening if it is not in your highest expression or on the path of your desired awakening. We take from you those instances of provocations that would derail your progress in such a way as is consistent with your free will as expressed by your own choosing and dimension of self. By this, we mean that this that song you sing, that undercurrent of desire, there's that word again, and formative belief that emanates from yourself in all moments. Therefore, we seek those opportunities in alignment with yourself and all that is happening within your physical sphere that will align you with your greatest outcome. So I love this idea that they are our magnetic barrier. And if you think about that, that that so their role is to place themselves between us <laughs> and everything we're attracting and to be the filter and to say to say this particular thing you're attracting is going to lead to an outcome that is not aligned with your highest and best or that's not going to get you. It may derail you from what your real life purpose is, even though it's harmonizing with your inner self, even though it's a vibrational match, it's not the best vibrational match. So they say they 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 are with as long as it's consistent with our free will and with our inner like with with the being that we are right that it has to be they can only bring us things that are harmonizing with our vibration they can't just say oh you know how about a ham sandwich when it doesn't match your vibration <laughs> it has to be consistent um so they're going to bring us the things that are that are that work for us and that are that are most aligned helping us to get along in the direction that we're going to go so they have a really active role in our creation of our world and of our creation of our reality. Um, so they go on to say, we do this work, whether solicited or not. We have your permission ethereal, not actual, and may intervene in this manner with no violation to yourself. In fact, you would wish, you would wish it not removed, for it is through this manner that we enable your perseverance on the planet. We prevent catastrophe. We prevent misalignment away from your own choosing for vibration is an indiscriminate thing and may attract what you do not have in mind. We refine that which comes and allow to pass those options, dear, which have meaning to the self. And this, I think, is the real like major payoff of this whole message. This part right here, I think, is super cool. And I think what they're saying here is that um, that. Uh, this idea that that first of all, they're saying that they can help us where, whether we ask it or not. So that idea of like, what about the people that you love that never speak to the angels that like don't have that are completely like the atheists in the world who really don't don't have any wish to be part of this. The angels say that they can still help them. And they do that um, in this method of sort of defining what comes and that they're allowed to that they have permission sort of at the ethereal level, they have permission and they stay in this like this way, like they said, to prevent great catastrophe. So think of this. I like this as an idea of how to understand this concept that 
that imagine that your vibration is resonating with the frequency of mixing things up, that you are needing in your life to stir things up, to change things, that you're needing a great interrupter, right? That could, astrologically, this would be like the appearance of Uranus in your chart. You need something that's going to mix it up and stir it up and get you out of whatever you are in right now. And that could manifest in a bunch of different ways. And that could show up as like a person that you meet that challenges your ideas and, and makes you think in a new way, right? Or it could show up as a horrific car crash that, you know, damages your body and makes you sort of give up everything you've been doing and rethink your whole life. And both of these outcomes would be a vibrational match for who you are and what you're emanating. You're emanating the need to, to break out and to break free and to change. And that change, like I said, could come in this little lovely package of a person you meet who inspires you, or it could come in the form of a horrific car crash. And the angels are saying that here they get to intervene because vibration, this is the, the amazing part, vibration is indiscriminate. That your vibration, the vibration itself is not an intelligence. That the vibration is just, it's just like when you, you know, when they, you see like a, uh, uh, the idea of, you know, the sound vibrates and it makes anything that's in harmony with that sound vibrate as well. There's no, nothing discriminant about that. It's not like, well, I'm only going to make the wine glass vibrate and not the bell or whatever. You know, anyways, you get my point <laughs> that, that it does not discriminate between what it harmonizes with as long as it matches that frequency. And you could be attracting something to yourself through your vibration that is really not aligned with your purpose in life or what it is that you want for yourself. You could be attracting something that yes, it's harmonizing with you, but it brings along all this other horrible baggage that you really don't want. And so here is where the angels are saying they sort of station themselves as a magnetic barrier and they prevent the car crash from coming and they let through the person who's going to inspire you and change your mind. So I love this idea and I think it's such a great point. I don't think we think about that, that vibration, this idea of vibration and attraction is indiscriminate. And it's true that you can attract somebody, you can meet a friend that in a phase of life where you completely harmonize with them in one aspect. But in other areas, there, you know, there are people are complex. They have all these other traits or qualities that don't have any any connection to yourself. But in this one area, you guys are like, wow, you're just humming. And that just shows you that that it doesn't take like it doesn't have to be a complete match and a vibration, a vibrational match can bring in things you really don't want. And that that is where the angels step in and they say they have this permission and they do this for everyone. They have it, you know, from the astral. They have this permission to come in and do this work for all of us, whether we ask it or not. So I think the places where they're saying they can't come in and help is in our sort of daily sufferings, in our daily, you know, the, the daily life of of it within that range like within that range of things that they let through there's going to be you know things that are better things that are harder or even on the path that we're meant to be on there's going to be things about that path that are really challenging right as we're trying to work through that as our just the struggle of learning ourselves and learning who we are they can help us with that struggle if we ask them and that's the place i think where the permission comes in where we where we need their help and you're saying, uh, thank you for allowing the idea that car crashes and other unwanted disasters can actually be part of our spiritual path. Everything is a miracle. That's so exactly true. And you, you just don't know, like what a lot of times those things, if you have a major thing like that, it's often pre-planned before we get here. Um, and, and they can be super formative to, to the development of, of who we're meant to be. Um, but yeah, but sometimes it's not. And, and that's, I think, where the angels would not let that through. They would sort of, okay, that one's not for you. Let's just push that out of the way. Let's push that possibility out in a way. All right. So they go on to say, um, uh, let's see. Okay. So they say, we love best our interventions, positive and unlikely. Those serendipitous moments you achieve, but sometimes, and know by their rare occurrence that we are there nearby. For how may you detect ourselves but by this method? Ordinarily, it is by this pattern that most know of our presence. And we so appreciate that acknowledgement of self that we come readily to appreciate the results of our subtle interference. So here they're talking about serendipity. And when they intervene um, uh, in a way that, that uh, like last night in our Wisdom Soup meetup, um, uh, Charles told a story about how he was meant to go to find Delphi to go to the place where he li now lives. And he had all these serendipitous happenings that, uh, for example, uh, 
Um, he there's a woman who randomly told him about it and then gave them the brochure and the brochure was sitting on his desk and he bumped it and this whole pack of things they fell on the floor and the one about the Del Delphi about the one place he was supposed to go come out and spun right in front of him and he didn't do anything about it he picked it up and put it away and then in the, and then moments later another person walked by bumped the same packet of papers and the same thing happened again the same one came out and spun <laughs> and that's that's the kind of serendipity that they're talking about and I love this idea that they're so delighted with their own right you're saying they delight in their cleverness exactly that they love this that they love like and there are awareness that they're present that they uh that i love the idea that they're standing nearby watching and waiting to see what we do <laughs> you know like looking to see how we respond and if we notice them and if we are aware of how they're helping us i think it's just such a, a, a beautiful idea you're saying they delight in their cleverness, serendipity, knowing their subtle interference, right? I just love that. So when they say this is their, they love best their interventions, positive and unlikely. Yeah, there's serendipitous moments you achieve, but sometimes and know by their rare occurrence that we are there nearby. So, um, so yeah, so a very cool and, and helpful message. And I think for me, the one of the big takeaways on this one is that idea about that vibration is indiscriminate. The vibration is not intelligent. That vibration doesn't choose the best outcome for us. And we need that, what they describe as their mag magnetic barrier. We need the angels out there helping us. And that this process of creation is a two dance. There's two partners to this dance. It's us and them. They're helping us with our creation. And we are the action, the decision. We are the one that's making it happen. But they are out there in the retrieval, right? They're helping to determine as that barrier, what comes through and what doesn't. And like you said, sometimes the difficult things that come through, and, and I think this is even more helpful to know, if the angels are out there performing this well, then you know when really hard things come through, you know that everything is for us, that everything is aligned with our greatest and highest good. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to join me live, I'm live every Friday in my Facebook group, which is called Spirit Means Business. I'm going to put the link to that below in the description box, and I'll also put a link to my website in case you want to find more about my work. Thanks a lot. See you next time.